Welcome to Red Cell Review on our part two of Halloween, uh, the Halloween discography. Uh, today, Keepers of the Seven Keys, part one. Ooh. Hey, the Keeper of the Eighth Key. Yeah. What happened to those other keys? Got lost on the way home. They did. They did mm-hmm. get lost. Do you Too know what happened? Do you have Too any idea what might have happened? No, I don't know what happened. No, I don't either. Um, that, that joke went nowhere. Continue. No, it didn't go anywhere. But Kai Hansen has now gave up his singing spot and he gave it to Michael Kiske, which was he was like a what, 17 or 18 year old kid at the time, maybe 19 years old. 18, 19, yeah, 18, 19. I, I believe it said he was 18. Yeah, he was very young. So, uh, full but head having hair too at the time. full head of hair, here he is right here. You can see him. Yeah, if I don't. He did not yeah. look like Michael Chiklis from The Shield yet, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, but um, they totally changed up the sound. Uh, they got rid of like the the thrashy type sound that they had with the Walls of Jericho in the EP, and they gave it up for a more melodic type sound, almost like a Iron Maiden type thing, but now with double bass in a way. It's kind of how I describe this version of Halloween. Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden with double bass, basically, pretty much the same. Not thing. a bad description. No. <laughs> So, uh, again, a lot of awesome songs in here. I'm Alive, A Little Time, Twilight of, Twilight of the Gods, probably the fastest song I've ever heard at the time of listening to this album. Uh, Tale That Wasn't Right, that's a very slow song. Pretty cool. Uh, not my favorite song on here. Future World, huge favorite song of mine back in the day. Nowadays, I'm kind of like sick of it a little bit because it's just uh, overly played. Uh, and Halloween, I mean, that song is one of my top favorite Halloween songs uh first time um well actually the, one of the first videos i ever saw there was a halloween thing i was very pissed off when i saw that they, they made like a five six minute video out of it the yeah, edit is terrible minutes, actually oh four minutes oh my god yeah but the, the edit sucks so to really yep. get into the song you got to hear the full version uh it's really you know it's just a really great epic song um and final sign just a, a, a outro thing but one of my top favorite albums. Uh, and Greg, you asked me earlier uh, who wanted to know what era of Halloween is my favorite era. And I, I said the, the uh, Andy Dears era. Uh, but most people say the Kiski era. I, I understand, you know, it's it's the classic era, but they did more with Andy Dears to me. And um, uh, they might have done more albums with Dears, but, you know, they defined a genre with right. what they did. On exactly these yeah. two albums yeah but uh one one favorite thing that i did see because um these albums they, they started drawing the pumpkins i mean in walls of jericho they had them too but uh when i had the albums they really didn't have all the artwork in it like on that cd i think you the one you have greg it does have artwork in there yeah it does yeah Who but the one a seasonal fruit would have been symbolic of a metal band right I, but it works so well. And people, like, when they stopped doing this on some of the albums, people were pissed and they wanted to see the pumpkins again, so they brought them back in. But <coughs> uh, this was always my favorite part of these. And when I had the CDs, they didn't have these in here. They didn't have all the artwork. And even on the cassettes, they didn't have the artwork. It's just lyrics. So when I, uh, when I found out they had all this stuff in there, I had to find these uh, LPs. So really cool. Again, great artwork. That's always a very famous uh, album cover of theirs. Uh, um yeah, I can't say nothing bad about that album because it just opened up a whole new world for me. Uh, Lou, I'll start with you this time. So I know I was joking around about Michael Kiske. Truth is, yeah, I really yeah. don't have anything against him. I think he is a very super talented vocalist. Um, I liked him better come part two. I just thought that his, his voice got better or definitely got more um, acclimated with Halloween in a better way. But for a first attempt, it was, you know, a, a really good album. Um, it just so happens for me, my favorite side on the album w- would have to be side two. You know, Future World and Halloween are my two favorite songs on this album. Mm. And um, but I also have to give it up to the song A Tale That Wasn't Right. Um, kind of reminded me of 70s era Scorpions, which that's my favorite era of the group. Mm. So. You know, I really enjoyed that one, too. Um, and it's funny, you know, you mentioned that the Dearest Era is your favorite. Most people say the Kiski favorite, uh, the Kiski Era is their favorite. I would say my favorite is the Hanson Era. So, mm. you know, so I far, agree. Walls of Jericho is my favorite album up until now. 
Mm. But still a great album and definitely a sign of what's to come in the future for mm. for how for Halloween. So, you know, good on them for a genre defining two parter. Yeah. The only reason why I, I love the the Hanson era. The only reason why I can't really say that's my favorite is because there is not enough. Those that EP and that first album just not enough for me to like it that much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I guess you could include this and part two since he is on them. Yeah, but he's not singing, and the music's different too. Yeah, that, that's true. Again, it's it's almost a different band now. You know. All right, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the Greg. Yeah, I mean, you can tell it's the same group of guys just based on uh, Kai's guitar and the yeah. way Ingo plays drums, but it it really is a complete left turn in what they're doing. And I, I agree, Wayne, because when I first heard this, that was exactly what I thought. Oh, it's like Maiden, but different. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Faster. Uh, yeah, faster. Um, a Little Time and Halloween would be my two favorite songs from this, but, you know, Future World's great as well, and uh, Twilight of the Gods. Um, great album, total classic. I just don't like it as much as the first uh, album. Yeah, I totally understand. <laughs> uh, do you want to just do Keepers of the Seven Keys Part 2 right now? Might as well. Now, just add it to the show. We, we, one thing I will say about I do like part two better than part one, even though <clears throat> part one, I believe, has the stronger, more exciting songs on it. But part two, they refine their attack a little bit better. And it's really about how, like Lou was saying, Kiss K's vocals work better on that album. Yeah, I couldn't see Kai singing these songs. You know, no, not at all. But I, I guess I can agree with uh, Kiski's voice getting a little better with, on part two. Uh, so we'll just go to part two right now. Uh, Keeper of Seven Keys, part two. Another great looking album cover. Um, this they wanted to release these albums all in the same thing, but uh, the record label didn't want them to. Uh, and another thing too. Well, Greg, what? Would you take a chance on a double album by an unknown but, band? <laughs> 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 it's very true, very true. But you know, they've they've re- actually released this now. There's a couple different versions with both of them on there, so you know it works. But the the production is different on both of them, you know. And I actually mm-hmm. prefer I prefer the Keepers One production than I do Part Two. Really? Yeah, I think Part Two it's missing something. It's just like a little too light sounding. I, I don't know. I can't really describe it. A little too. Huh. It's more softer to me, I think, than the Part One. Well. I think the songs are kind of written a little softer than part one for the most part on here. Yeah. And that could be why too, but uh, just, it's the sound is different, but still it's an awesome album and it starts off with probably the most, uh, loved Halloween song in our whole discography. Eagle fly free. You know, I, I think everybody loves Eagle fly free. Yeah. I think so too. That song is just so singable. Every little, Singing that song was just fucking awesome. Uh, you always walk alone. That is a song that Michael Kiske brought over from uh, his old band before he joined Halloween. Uh, he wrote all the uh, lyrics and stuff for that, um, and it's probably why he doesn't really write too many lyrics for much of the songs because that song isn't really that good. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's probably my least favorite on here. Yeah, it's what well, you a- always walk alone. Yeah. yeah, I didn't mind it that much. It's okay, but it's it doesn't hold up to the other songs. Well, I wasn't too keen on Rise and Fall. I thought it was the locomotion sung by ABBA mixed with the <laughs> barbershop quartet. <laughs> so I always wow. love Rise and Fall, but a lot of people give Rise and Fall shit. I don't know why. And that because it sounds like ABBA singing with a barbershop co- quartet doing their version of the locomotion. I, well, they, they're a huge ABBA fans, so what do you expect? Everyone in Europe is a huge ABBA fan, well, and so is Ralph Vieira. Let's not take that away from him, Ralph too. Vieira too. No, and All right, I, I, like, I, I like disagree ABBA. wholeheartedly. Not an ABBA fan? No. Oh, okay. I'm not either. I hate ABBA. It's, um, just, it's just regurgitated crap, synthesized oh, on, and played for me. the masses. <laughs> and I'm surprised you missed what I said earlier uh, on the last episode, Lou, when I said Judas is always in my mind. I wasn't. I didn't listen to it until then. <laughs> Went right over his head. Uh, Doctor Steen, 
really great song. They still play that live now. Still a yeah. huge uh, live favorite. That was one of the first Halloween songs I heard, and I love it. But I have just heard it way too many times. Oh, that yeah. uh, it's a great song, but enough. <laughs> yeah, yep, exactly. That, that's how I feel about Future World. They they constantly play it, and, and then when they oh, play I it agree live, with you there too. Yeah. yeah. And then when they play it live, then they they have they they extend the whole middle part, and they have the crowd sing it, and it's just like, all right, I, just end this song already, please. By the way, props to them on the nice little homage to Day in the Life at the end of Dr. Steen. I was just going to mention that as well. Yep. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I, I was hoping, I, I almost forgot, but I'm glad you did re- you know, say that because, uh, and actually I did not know that because I, you know, I like the Beatles, but I kind of forgot about the Beatles songs, you know, until like a couple of years ago when I started getting back into them and I'm listening to all the albums and then I hear that note. I'm like, where's that note from? And then I remembered Dr. It Steve. was the note from the end of Kill You Tonight from Typo Negative at the end of Origin of the Feces. Yes, they used it too. They used it too? Oh, all right. Yes. Uh, I forgot about that too. Uh, but uh, we well, got the right... Carnivore was better, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got the right... I think this one is better than uh, A Tale That Wasn't Right. Yeah. I think it's a better put-together song. Uh, and the U.S. version... Uh, has the song Save Us on the B-side, uh, which I didn't know. I thought this was always part of the album, and apparently it's not. Really? So, yeah. I was, didn't know that either. Yeah, It's only for the U.S., the, the the original German version. It just goes to March of Time, which is probably my third favorite Halloween song of all time. And I will hopefully do a cover of that song at some point. I called it a face melter. So if you want to do it, I'm in. All right. I just got to figure out how to play the drums again. Uh, <laughs> I want out. Great song. Again, that's another one I don't really need to hear anymore. Right? No, I, I can listen to that song until I'm blue in the face. I mean, that was my gateway Halloween song. Not album, song. Yeah. So I'm not sick of it. And and seeing them perform it live, like from what I saw in their concert videos, mm. I would like to be there one time. To- just one time. Just one time. Just to sing it with them. All right, we might get a chance. We'll see what happens. Um. Oh, what? Oh, a friend of mine. Uh, they got married, and she was asking people, you know, what songs do you want to play, or whatever. And I want know, out. <laughs> she did. She she's like, I know you love Halloween, and I'm sitting there eating, and then all of a sudden, I want out comes on. I'm like, you pick this song out of all the songs. And Wayne <laughs> jolted out of his chair, fist in the air, and sang along with every verse and chorus. I did. I did. No, I, I knew did. it. No, I didn't. Uh, and then Keeper of the Seven Keys again, another epic track. One of my all-time favorite epic tracks uh, tells the story of the keys, but it's missing some of the keys. What happened to them? We'll find out later on, on maybe one of the later albums, won't we? Well, this is, I think, the first song where they, I don't, maybe it's not the first song where they have clean playing, but I really got to give it up to them in the for their, you know, their lack of distortion on the guitars during mm. the uh, middle of the song. I mean, it sounded amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it opens up with that acoustic thing, and then you know they ha- like you said, it has all the acoustic stuff in between the songs. And yeah, my second favorite song on the album. Oh, it's it's awesome, uh, Greg. I mean, we kind of talked about it as we were going, but yeah, um, I love it. Th- this was my introduction to them. The I Want Out video. That's one song, like Lou was saying, I'll never get tired of. But um, yeah, I just feel like they refined their attack a little bit on this, and I love it. Definitely a classic. Um, even though, like I said, I'd personally probably take part two over part one. I really don't think one's better than the other. Even though the production between the two is different, they're uh, definitely two halves of the same whole. And yeah. Ke- Keepers is just awesome. <laughs> yep. Keepers one and two. Yep. Lou? Uh, yes, you sir. finally got to hear this album uh, on a whole. Yes, and I will say this, like Number of the Beast is for Maiden, the Keepers albums, I would say, for anyone who wants to know what Halloween is all about, get them both. Because, you know, you'll get the best in melodic, you'll get the best in poppy choruses or catchy choruses, you'll get the best in very fast playing with songs like Eagle Fly Free, and... You know, you get the song that they're probably most known for 
especially, you know, from a music video standpoint, I want out, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's their, I'm trying to think of the uh, correct term, their benchmark albums, I would say. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And also, if you're going to start listening to Maiden, don't start with Number of the Beast. No, start with the first one, but, you know. <laughs> well, no, if you're going to start with Dickinson era, I mean, Power Slave, peace of mind. That's Number of the Beast is their weakest of the 80s. But I can this see is that. about Halloween. This is I about mean, <laughs> if, I just feel like if you took Gangland out and replaced it with Total Eclipse, it'd be a better album. But that's just my opinion. It would be, but you'd also have to get rid of Invaders. I liked Invaders. And, uh, Invaders is one of the worst songs they ever wrote. I don't care what anyone says. Yes, it's it is horrible. It's Did crap. you prefer Invasion with Diano? Yes, but it's a completely different song. Other than having a conjunction of the word inv invade in it somewhere, there is absolutely no similarity between the two of them at all. None, mm -hmm. none whatsoever. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> the, the other thing about that record, and for example, like Children of the Damned, love that song. Sounds way better on live after death. Bruce had just joined the band. They hadn't quite figured out how to write with his voice yet. So he sounds a little awkward on certain songs on that album. Hmm. All right, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, it really comes full circle on shit like 22 Acacia Avenue and Hallowed Be Thy Name. But he sounds a little odd on The Prisoner and Children of the Damned. Hmm. Kind of similar how Michael Kiske came to sound in the... Halloween Good segue. On one. Yeah. Got no, better that, on part two. It's true. Yeah. It very is very similar true. situation. <laughs> Same yeah. thing. And, oh, and what? I love Save Us. I can't believe that wasn't on the album elsewhere yeah. except for the U.S. I mean, it's. Yeah. Uh, it's it's if, hard if, for me. If like, I had a, picking an overall favorite song from this one's really tough, but that would be up there. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's it's an awesome song, and then when I was listening to it, like on Spotify, uh, not on Spotify, on Amazon, they have it the the original way it's supposed to be without save us in that spot, and I'm like, wow, this seems just weird. It just seems out of place because they put it at the end because it's a bonus track. It yeah, just it's weird. It it fits on that second part of the album, you know. It, it fits too perfectly. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Weird. Very weird thing. But again, if you have not heard for some strange reason. These two albums, please do yourself a favor and go listen to them. Don't be stupid. They're awesome. You'll like them. Thank me later. And Lou, what's your website? Musicislifepodcast.com and check out RatsideReview.com. And check out ProjectResurrect.bandcamp.com. CDs are coming. Buy one. See you tomorrow. Bye. Later.